Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share yet another video about the Asus Zephyrus G15. Of course, this is one of the best gaming and content creation machines on the market right now, especially at its respective price point of $1,800 US dollars. This is the best buy model for those of you unaware who haven't followed my coverage uh, since early February when I picked it up. We've got, of course, the Ryzen 9 5900HS 8-core CPU, complemented by NVIDIA's RTX 3070 and a fairly gorgeous 15.6-inch QHD uh, 165 hertz uh, panel that really strikes, in my opinion, the best balance uh, for both gaming as well as content creation without it being 4K, which is a pet peeve of mine. But back to what this video is really about, which is stability with the NVMEs. So in my last update about this, for those of you that watched, you know I went over what was an extreme headache uh, and I was able to resolve the problem. Now, in terms of sourcing the problem with the NVMe upgrade process, I'll also be talking about the RAM upgrade uh, going up to 40 gigs with the 32 gig uh, crucial DIMM. Essentially, the solution ended up being going back to the stock Hynix one terabyte drive, which still has best in class performance, although it does leave a lot for me personally to be desired because I have four terabyte drives that I would have rather been running the operating system off of purely for convenience, uh, even if it was slightly slower. Uh, and the secondary drive, I've got the uh, Sabrent Rocket Q four terabyte drive. Even that drive I would have rather had as my primary uh, for the OS. Um, and it seemed like it was going to work, but as much as I was able to get some form of stability, running that drive, and that was with a clean, uh, clean install, I did run into some blue screens of death, and that was enough to make me say, you know what, uh, I'm going to go back to the Hynix because that was always stable, at least since Asus pushed out firmware updates, because those of you that watched my early videos on this machine know that before I ever tweaked anything, before I ever even opened it, there were some BSODs, and nobody wants that, especially not in a nearly $2,000 machine. And because this is still out of stock, basically permanently, a lot of you are paying a premium for it. And I know why. I mean, it is an incredible laptop uh, at its weight, its battery life, the ab ability to trickle charge, and everything being new. You know, nothing on this machine is old. And God knows every year when you shop laptops, one component, whether it's the CPU, GPU, or display, is always dated. This was why the G15 was the unicorn of 2021. And yes, better things will come out down the road, but still, at least through the rest of this quarter and possibly the second quarter of 2021, hard to beat. So back to the NVMEs. Um, regardless of what I did, uh, whether it's power draw or something more mysterious, uh, it seems the Hynix is just the drive design for this machine, and that's likely why there aren't larger capacity uh, storage options available. It's almost as if uh, Asus probably could address this in a BIOS firmware uh, update, but they probably don't want to because I hate to say that in some ways I feel like as much as I like this machine, as well as they did so many things right, that... I can't help but feel like it's a disposable system. And that's not a knock against it because I do plan on lasting for years. I did buy it after all. Uh, I don't have extreme remorse, but frustration, absolutely. And everything I'm sharing with all of you is so that you don't go through the crap that I did. So first and foremost, if you don't need additional storage, just stick with that Hynix. Like I said, it'll give you best in class performance. Uh, not as good as some stuff out there, but considering what generally comes uh, pre-installed in pre-built systems like this uh, that are not custom, really customizable at all, soldered RAM being another big red flag for no customization, essentially, it is a very good perform uh, performer. I mean, Hynix is right there with Samsung and Sabrin as being the three brands that I trust. Now, the secondary drive, as I stated, I'm totally stable with the Sabrent Rocket Q 4TB, no blue screens, 
But the fact that I experienced any when it was the primary was why I couldn't leave it. Uh, the Gen 4 drives, even though they're completely backwards compatible and I have no issues running them in other laptops I'm reviewing right now, again, no stability. So that says to me, I just have to feel like at the end of the day, unless Asus reaches out to me and gives me some kind of solution, which I highly doubt is going to happen because I haven't heard from them at all, uh, I have to believe that it is BIOS related. So what I once thought was absolutely power draw related, because for those of you that watch the videos, you know, on battery was where I was experiencing BSODs, uh, whereas on the actual 200 watt uh, proprietary charger, I was totally stable. I keep saying I was totally stable. This makes it sound like a mental health video, not to knock mental health, but it's we are talking about uh, the computer. So basically what it comes down to is that if you want to upgrade this, stick to the second slot, stick to something between two and four. Obviously, don't try for eight. I've had people ask me if the Sabrent eight terabyte drive will work in here. Even though I don't have the Sabrent eight terabyte yet on hand, uh, I only have the external Q version, which of course works beautifully with this uh, since it's backwards compatible. You know, it supports Thunderbolt three as well as a traditional type C connections. Uh, I am fairly certain, can nearly guarantee you, you're not going to get away with that 8 terabyte drive. But when Sabrent does get it to me, you better believe I will see if we can drop it in as a secondary drive, but I doubt it. The good news is, is that if you do want to take storage up to the next level, and I really think 4 terabytes is the sweet spot. I mean, when you look at pricing tiers, you can do it. And I didn't expect to be able to do this to do that after the last video I shared with all of you, where I couldn't even get a Gen 4 2 terabyte alone to work in this machine. Uh, and the day that I actually shared that video with all of you, I had the 4 terabyte Rocket Q that's in here right now as the secondary working as the primary. But as I've mentioned over and over in this video, instability just kept popping up while on battery. So oddly enough, you know, it does not seem to be a power draw issue, uh, I believe. That's my own suspicion. And I just feel like on some level, this is a cookie cutter machine. And while Asus says, yeah, there's an, uh, there's an additional NVMe slot. And yes, you can upgrade the RAM, which I did. And I'm going to talk about that now. They really aren't incentivizing it because it seems to be somewhat inhibited. And I can't help but feel like it's to push us to purchase the next tier, the, you know, the more expensive, the 3080 model, or, you know, in general, just to get you to another price point. And there's something, you know, unsettling about that sort of uh, approach in spite of how much I like this machine and can still recommend it to everyone that's watching this video. Uh, so th that's out of the way. You now know, keep the Hynix and, you know, feel free to throw another drive in there, but save the headache. Do yourself a favor. Don't go through what I did after all. That's pretty much a large part of why I do what I do is so that those of you who are subscribers and even the ones who aren't don't have to go through the shit I do. I mean, if that's at least what I accomplish, God bless you all. Now, moving away from that, the RAM. Do you need it? Now, I would say 90% of you do not need to run out and buy that 32 gig DIMM. The 16 gigs that are on board will be perfectly fine. But if you're going to do any 4K video editing, any editing of raw images that are high uh, megapixel count, like for me, the A7R4 uh, Sony full frame camera, you're talking about over 60 megapixels. Those files are large. Uh, you know, it's just kind of a no brainer from a multitasking standpoint because you do want to have at least 32 gigs of RAM. And yes, you do give up dual channel support after the first 16 gigs. But here's what I can tell you. When I'm editing in 4K, I'm pretty much just about using up all 16 gigs uh, of that you know, initial 40 gigs of RAM. So if I have this connected to an external monitor, which I do, this does act like a desktop for me. I love the fact that it's completely mobile at 4.2 pounds and a solid battery life, trickle charge. That's why I kept it. But if I'm using it as a desktop docked with a Thunderbolt 4 dock, which I am right now, works beautifully. A lot of you have been asking. Also really dig uh, the little mini anchor dock, but I don't really know that I can recommend this at $200. I just feel like, 
you know, it's designed for Apple users. If you catch my drift, um, you know, there's, it's, it's a nice little hub styled well, like the form factor, but this needs to be more like a hundred dollars, not 200. Uh, the point is, is that if you have it docked as a desktop, you can easily, uh, like I'm doing now, find yourself wanting to be able to, while rendering, while exporting, whatever you're doing, also want to browse the web. Uh, also want to work on Word documents, uh, spreadsheets, whatever it may be, and not just have a few tabs open. And the 40 gigs will give you that extra headroom. From a benchmarking standpoint, uh, with the latest NVIDIA driver, uh, Game Ready driver, that just dropped on the 14th, my benchmarks are all still pretty much the same. We're talking about uh, in 3D Mark, uh, Fire Strike about uh, 90 300 and change. So not a whole lot has changed in that regard. Uh, so I was really concerned that upgrading would, you know, knock down performance. It hasn't in gaming either. That's another bonus. Uh, and by the way, I didn't mention, for those of you that are wondering about the finish, yes, this is a vinyl from M2 Skins. If you didn't watch my video uh, reviewing a wide variety of different finishes from them for the G15, check it out. Uh, my biggest gripe with this machine, outside of the headache uh, that I went through already with, of course, the NVMe upgrade process, was the aesthetic. And uh, going with the M2 skins uh, really has changed my entire perspective on this machine. I actually like the way it looks now, which is important. You should like the aesthetic of your machine. And the G15 was sedate compared to something uh, well, to many other options that are out there that kind of look like toys rather than laptops. And that's good for some people, uh, each to their own, you know, whatever they prefer. But I wanted something uh, that basically could be just as comfortable in a boardroom, even though I'm not going to any during a pandemic, as well as, you know, in my home office or outside, out and about. I, I wasn't looking for something that looked like it was devised by Martians. So, you know, Pretty good, but even better with the skin. This is the carbon fiber with the custom, uh, you know, uh, company logo. They can customize pretty much anything you want. And then we've got the matrix uh, on the interior. I really like the tactile feel. So overall, I'm really happy with this machine now, um, which is good. I'm ready to do a full review that's coming. Um, you could look at this as one because, again, uh, this has been rolling coverage literally since mid, you know, I think my first video was probably February, second week of February. I'm not exactly sure if it was the 12th or 13th or 14th. It doesn't matter. The point is, this is a long-term rolling review. Every single blow that I've gone through with this machine, uh, the ups and downs. And right now I'm happy uh, with what I've got, uh, especially now that I'm, you know, I've got a Thunderbolt 4 dock that pretty much does exactly what I was looking for out of Thunderbolt, which this machine completely lacks. Just remember uh, to get the best performance out of the GPU with this. Um, you will be using uh, the display ports right here, not the HDMI uh, 2.0 port. Uh, and you can go two ways with that. You can go, of course, a, a Type-C to display port 1.4 uh, in order to do Literally, I kid you not, 4K, 120 hertz. It is doable, especially in less demanding, uh, you know, non-fresh off uh, the press AAA titles. Or you can do what I've been doing, which is use an adapter, the Cable Matters one, uh, that is a Type-C uh, to HDMI 2.1. Now, the reason I go that route, which a lot of you have asked me, is because I use this when gaming uh, at least 4K, 120 hertz, on my LG OLED 48-inch uh, CX. So that's the reason for the HDMI 2.1 as opposed to just going uh, to DisplayPort. Uh, I do have gaming monitors that support that as well. Uh, so that is a cable I own as well, but that, I prefer the HDMI. I just think it's a little bit more flexible. Uh, but overall, really satisfied with this machine. Happy I finally have something stable. I really appreciated all of the comments uh, and attempts you all made. Uh, to try to shed any light on resolving uh, the overall instability. Uh, but ultimately, the simplest, the simplest answer was the correct one, which was, again, Asus just, I, I don't feel like they really intended for us to get inside here and do very much. So while, again, 
The RAM is upgradable and you have a second NVMe slot. <sighs> Buyer beware on that front. So out of the box, you're going to have a, a fantastic experience if the quality control is fine. My speakers, by the way, uh, since all of the software updates have also been great, really enjoying the fact that I've got uh, a laptop with uh, what, in my opinion, is some of the best audio on the market. And that's not how I felt uh, back in February, clearly documented uh, in many, many videos. So stability is a go. The entire machine performs really well. And again, kind of almost Ultrabook-esque uh, battery life, 4.2 pounds, charges up in a little over an hour. No complaints other than the fact that, of course, the all-plastic chassis can leave some concern. And as I've mentioned, be careful when reinserting these screws that you have the orientation correct since they are different length uh, and you could potentially end up putting a dimple on the deck uh, around the uh, touchpad like I did. So, you know, uh, just be aware. But overall, great machine. Kudos to Asus. Uh, for what they put together here, uh, but I do take away, of course, some points for the inability to really take this up to six or eight terabytes of overall internal storage. But that's all. We've got an update. Things are looking a lot better. I'm a lot less frustrated. And for those of you that were worried about your Best Buy pre-order, I wouldn't, or whoever you're ordering it from, you just know now, don't run out and throw in a Gen 4 uh, fastest on the market drive, even though it should work, because unfortunately, Asus, I think, has to address some things in order for us to really be able to fully leverage what we could be. Um, kind of like the amount of power going to the GPU. Um, and a lot of people are doing custom things with that. I wouldn't screw around. This machine is not meant to, uh, I feel, really be tinkered with above and beyond what they've designed for us to enjoy, which isn't a bad thing. It's still a fantastic machine, just as it comes right out of the box. But that rounds it out. An update that I'm happy to share with all of you because I'm not pulling my hair out anymore um, and spending hours on end trying to troubleshoot something that should work out of the box. So bottom line is stick with the Hynix. And if you need the RAM, you know, try not to overpay for it. Uh, Links in, you know, for everything in the description, and you know the 4 terabyte Rocket Q uh, works perfectly well. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button, and as usual, please feel free to subscribe, and please stay safe. Later.